Quite the evening at Anfield. Quarter past eight on Tuesday night, Liverpool 2-0 up. Supporters were savouring what looked like it was going to be the best night of their season, but in the space of a very few minutes indeed, turned out to be the worst in their history in European football. 5-2 defeat at home. Martin, you famously are fascinated by murders. What do you make of what Real Madrid did to, to Liverpool? Well, it was astonishing, James, really, because 2-0 up at Anfield, there wouldn't be too many teams come away from that, you know, yeah, intact, never mind anything else. But Vinicius scores a great goal to make it 2-1. Back in the game again, obviously the um, the equaliser was... Um, um, it could have been avoided, let me put it that way. And, um, and from a game that, <clears throat> certainly in the first 15, 17, 18 minutes, that Liverpool are dominating, and 2-0 in front, they're going in at half-time to each. So a bit of head-scratching, I could imagine, in the home dressing room just at that stage... But not to panic, we can still get another goal. <clears throat> Within two minutes, they concede the free kick at the edge of the box. And um, obviously not alert to, uh, to the header coming in for, um, from Militao, I think it was, it scored the goal. Mm. Make it 3-2. And, and things dissolved after that, just really did. And it's really strange, amazing really for Liverpool. And I don't, I, I'm not even worried about the type of run that they've had this season. You know, Liverpool at Anfield, I don't care who they're playing, whether it's Real Madrid, Inter Milan, or any, you, they just disintegrated, really did, lost it, lost it completely. Sometimes it can happen. Mm. It can, but, you know, that was um, for Liverpool to concede five goals at home in the Champions League is, well, on. Almost unheard of. In yeah. fact, is unheard of. I think. Well, indeed, until, until this week. Napoli had had a massive win against them earlier in the season <coughs> away. So uh, there had been a kind of equivalent collapse like this, I guess, in, in the Champions League. But it was just the way that they'd started was so confident. That opening backheel flick from, from Darwin Nunes. Uh, and Real Madrid's composure to shake all that off and just breezily come back. Yeah, I mean, there were a lot of sort of, uh, whether it's bad luck or howling errors, I mean, there were about two deflections, weren't there, and it all just seemed to, to happen at once. I mean, I'm interested to ask you, Martin, that Real Madrid team, there's just something magic about it. You know, they always seem to, specifically with the Champions League, they often will come, you know, third in La Liga, but overcome teams that maybe are better on paper. What, why do you think that is? What is it about them? <clears throat> yeah, I agree with you, because um, at the start of the competition last year, if you... You would have long odds about Real Madrid going on to win it. You know they they, they look they look just insufficient. They've looked um, <coughs> excuse me. There's no such thing as saying that um, that they disinterested. But certainly these moments that they have where they think is well we'll pull through. And I'm quite sure the supporters think yeah I know we've got a history of pulling through, but we might not make it this time. And yet <coughs> they got stronger and stronger and stronger and go on and take the competition. Now, even in the final, I mean, the goalkeepers had a magnificent game, absolutely magnificent, um, but they found a way to win. Mm. And Real Madrid have actually, with a number of European Cups and Champions Leagues that they have, would suggest that they that football club finds a way to win. And uh, does that so, have like a psychological impact on the opponent? You know, um, Man City, they just fell apart. <clears throat> right, OK. I, I, don't, I don't think it should do now. I don't think because... Manchester City, perhaps because they they don't they haven't they haven't won it yet. So from that viewpoint, that um, I think you have to get over the line first, and then after once you've got over the line once, I think you can find yeah yeah look we can go and do this again. So we bit like Sir Alex Ferguson winning his first title. Once he's done that, yeah we'll go again. Now we've done it. Can park that to the side now. It's big relief. Done it. And and then go on, and then you go and dominate then for the next twenty years, whatever the case. But you have to get over the line first, and I think that's that that at the moment would suggest is a bit of a problem. In Manchester City, problem, a problem maybe too strong a word because I mean if VAR interfered for the, or uh, intervened in the time when they had uh, was against Tottenham Hotspur, mm. Tottenham a couple of years ago. I, you know, too young. If you're too young, yes. if you're too young, 2019. <coughs> I don't remember that. George, sorry. If I was you're only too 27. Young, if yeah. you're too young to remember or not know about Connect Four, yeah. you will certainly not, not remember the two years ago. Am I right, James? I think. It, I think it, yeah, it was. It definitely. Yeah. Yeah. It was yeah. against yeah. Tottenham Hotspur, yeah. Yeah. where Sterling, where they had already celebrated the goal, and then they're coming back and oh, it's, uh, and it. Mm. But anyway. But it shows, I guess, the how 
subtle and brittle a confidence for a team. I mean, that Liverpool team, as soon as they started to fall away on Tuesday night, they just looked broken. The fifth mm-hmm. goal, Fabinho, I don't know what he was doing in midfield, got yeah. robbed, and then... Well, But yeah, but let, let's talk a little bit about 37-year-old Luka Modric. Well, yeah. yeah. Bundling, pa- bundling people yeah. out the way to cap a magnificent performance. Vinicius as well. Is well, the, it, is it easy when you've got players <clears throat> like Vinicius? He's a really good player. Really good player. Mm. Um I think Ancelotti said something about uh, that he is up there with the very best at this minute. You would have to, I would consider that true as well because he he can go past players and 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 he's got the pace and he's now got the confidence and uh, I mean his improvement in the last what 15 months has mm. been fantastic. I would have thought that with those sort of players that Brazil should have gone on to have won the the World Cup, you know, really. Yeah. Wasn't might, to be. Might be others who share that opinion. Joey, I'm getting the sense that you feel maybe this result, the result was a, a bigger divide than the actual, that it, there was a certain amount of fortune involved in it being 5 I think five so. Two. It was one of those ones, you know, kind of remember, as a Villa fan, probably one of, one of the reasons I'm here chatting to Martin, the, the, the 7-2 was one of those ones where, against Liverpool, another time when Liverpool got badly beaten was just mm. every single deflection went in at once and I think that was slightly the case on, on Tuesday night there was, was it a lot of players falling over Joe as well Gomez Alisson kind mm. of bouncing mm. off the knee and going into the wrong corner it's just you know and I think that's reflected in the expected goals that, that, that Liverpool didn't deserve to lose five or in an ordinary game might have conceded three um, so I think there was an element of fortune in there is there is there something beyond fortune that Klopp needs to worry about in terms of Liverpool's approach in terms of one or two of the individual performances? <clears throat> Excuse me. I would hope not. I, th- I think that um, uh, from his viewpoint, I think that he, he will look at the game. I, I heard his interview afterwards when he was talking actually about the positives from that there. And, that, and you know what? It's not a bad way to look at it and mm. think, you know, yeah, OK, listen, we did concede some goals. He went on to try and explain how the goals were, you know, listen, relatively simple in that sense. But I don't... Is it has it been a has it been a, a, a poorish time for Liverpool over the the course of the season? Of course, by the sort of standards that they've been setting, particularly he has been setting in the last couple of seasons, mm. really remarkable. And you, I think you always feel that every the, the next week Liverpool are going to get it right. The following week they're going to get it right. And then they've got a little run. They go and win the uh, the derby game against Everton, and then actual fight. And I think with um, I think with Van Dijk coming back into the side again, I think that there would have been a good deal of confidence about that game going into the, the Real Madrid game. Yeah. Really good deal of confidence beforehand. Cried up for the game. And certainly, I'm telling you, you, you uh, two nil up, two nil. you're thinking, if we get a third goal here, we, we can run riot in the match. And the game changes in the last 70 minutes of the match. It's remarkable. Our friend Michael Cox had a good line, actually. He said that when Liverpool were 2-0 up, they played more like they were 2-0 down. And when they were 5-2 down, they played like they were 5-2 up. They didn't... Nearly all Liverpool shots came in the first half. It was almost like they were too scared in the second half to even have a go anymore. And I think that's the it's the psychological <coughs> flaw at the I, moment. I, I wonder about that. I, I, you know, you're two 0 up in the game. You're thinking the third goal is going to come. Mm. Then it goes against you. And from a game that you're dominating, it's only two one. And psychologically, it has an effect on you. Just a, you know, dangerous of, lead. It's a dangerous <coughs> lead. Martin, you're very much of the opinion that this was an episode and that there is. There isn't a need for necessarily Klopp to worry too much about the season based on this? Right. OK. Uh, l- listen, from my opinion, I, I thought that uh, <clears throat> where I felt that they, they, they probably needed um, a wee bit of strength in the middle of the field. I thought that from the, from the outset, that you need a lot of creativity in there. And, um, and I thought that that would have been a position that they would have tried to have strength in it, mm. really did. And... When that didn't materialise, and then you're going back, you know. Well, James Milner, James has been a great player, but James is, you know, what, 30, 37, 36, 37 years of age. Jordan Henderson has been a really good player for them as well, too. But what I'm saying is that you just need that uh, uh, creativity in there, somebody who's going to take the game with the scruff of the neck and, and, uh, and just d- and deal with it. And I just don't mean in terms of getting on the ball and sending little passes here. Maybe a, a driving midfield player is going to score you some goals as well too. Or, uh, you know, a, a Casemiro type perhaps, mm-hmm. you know, some, something anyway. And maybe something just to freshen things up. Now, you've got a lot of forward players who at Liverpool at this minute who have definitely ability and can, and can, do, and can do things. But 
I just felt if, if I miss out the midfield here, amazingly, and I thought this at the time, and I think it's come to fruition, Manny has been a major miss to them, really major miss. Not only, first of all, he hardly missed a game when he was... Secondly, he would do the defensive work for you. Mm. And three, he could get forward and he, and he could make goals and he could score goals. And, um, and Salah had, had, uh, had such a season that you would have thought, well, he's just a machine. He's just going to keep going. It's not going to happen. And when you drop off a little bit, mm. then, you, the, then you find that you have a little bit of a problem. A problem in the sense that wh where Liverpool want to be every single season, want to be challenging Manchester City, want to be in the European Cup final. But overall, for what Klopp has done for the football club, uh, I don't think that you... Uh, it just park the season to the side. Really? Yeah. This one? Uh, yeah, because yeah. it looks like the Champions League's gone. In terms of the league, they currently lie eighth, seven points off the top four, but with two games in hand on the side currently occupying that position. Spurs, next up for Liverpool, is a trip to Crystal Palace. Have they played significant games there before? Certainly doesn't appear to have been anything that's entered into folklore or anything. The Totally Football Show podcast is available three times a week, bringing you all the football news you could reasonably be expected to care about. We've got views we've got stats we've got analysis we've got some of the best football writers around and the whole thing is absolutely free so have a listen on spotify or apple podcasts or all the usual places by clicking on the link below